Welcome to this week's Prepare Like a Pro Live Chats Friday show. My name is Jack McLean, I'm your host, and this week I'll be discussing a key topic around my version of the DeFranco Agile 11. This is designed for Australian rules footballers to assist with not only lower back pain, but also your quality of movement, so it'll help you for things like change of direction, kicking, and ground balls. Before we get into this week's key topic, we have a huge announcement starting May 30th. We'll have two 30-day challenges. There will be a giveaway involved with the most engaged footballer for the 30-day challenge, and then for our coaches' 30-day challenge, there will also be a giveaway. Both have their own exclusive prizes. For the those 61 that have already joined our waitlist, you'll automatically enter this 30-day challenge. We have 100 spots uh, available. So if you want to join the Prepare Like a Pro 30-Day Challenge, make sure to click the link in our show notes. All the athletes that are on our program are automatically entered. So we currently have just over 30 spots available. So make sure to join today. Also, a quick heads up, when our academy is live as of June 1st for that 30-day trial, so for those that are in the wait list, you'll have exclusive first access um, we go live to the public on July 1st. So for those that miss out on the wait list, you'll be able to um, pay to be able to enter our academy. It's either $20 a month or $200 for the year. So you save two months on our annual membership. And that will include a, our Friday live shows going forward. So that's going to be exclusive in the academy membership. Uh, it won't be on our YouTube or socials anymore, as well as the live podcast episodes. So all our interviews that we host live at least a week before they're released to the podcast platform, they will be in the Academy membership and that allows our community to not only see the content first, but also I'll be catching up with them regularly on a weekly basis and asking the uh, members what questions to ask the guests and you'll be able to see firsthand your your questions being answered by the guests. I think that will be an awesome um, added value for, for our Academy members. The Prepare Like a Pro Academy is one-on-one or either group training sessions with the man himself, Jack. Um, These group training sessions or individual sessions can either be in the gym or out in the field working on strength or speed exercises. Um, Personally, my experience with Jack is I love doing Prepare Like a Pro sessions. You know, um, when I came to Jack for areas of improvement, he was straight on to it, you know, very knowledgeable, knew what he was saying, knew how to deal with me and like load and all that. Um, typically, a day-to-day session looks like we'll arrive at, at the moment, arrive at the gym, um, get all the warm-up stuff done, and then into the main liftings. And you know, there's a do- new exercise every week, so it keeps you on your toes. It's exciting. Um, I've already seen massive improvements to my game personally. I feel fitter, stronger, faster, and I've had compliments from outsider. Um, people also saying you look fitter, stronger and faster, so it shows it pays off and I believe Jack is a wonderful ex- um, resource to have in your corner. You know, he's so friendly and so knowledgeable in what he's doing that he just, I love going to every training session of his and yeah, the Prepare Like a Pro Academy is definitely something to um, enrol in. Okay, going into the key topic for this week, how to improve your mobility and preparation for football. I'm just going to quickly live stream over to Instagram and answer your questions as well as this key topic. G'day Instagram world, this week's key topic is on pre-game and post-game routine. Let's get straight into it. So I like to start the DeFranco Limber 11 was hugely successful in America for NFL footballers as well as General Pop who had lower back pain. So it's good for everyone and I've just slightly tweaked the protocol to suit footballers. So um, taking into account footballers is a lot more high volume running involved compared to NFL. So therefore we want to do some work through your feet and your um, calves and ankles. So from there, I've I've targeted the lower limb a little bit more than DeFranco did in the Limber 11. And um, we've kept the the philosophy the same, though. So it starts with self 
myofascial release work, so some um, foam rolling, and then it goes on to some mobility and then um, some flexibility work as well. So let's get straight into it. I start off um, the football version of this, get a lacrosse ball out, and I'm going to post a YouTube video to be able to follow this. So for those on our program, you'll be able to watch this sequence on Team Builder. For those subscribed to our YouTube channel, you can um, watch the whole video. It goes for about 10 minutes on our YouTube channel. So it starts with some tissue work. So get a lacrosse ball underneath your feet, roll for 30 to 60 seconds in the arch of your foot to release um, your, my, uh, your plantar fascia. Um, you can do that for a minimum of 30, 60 seconds, but you could also do a couple of sets each round, particularly if you found one foot was a little bit tighter than the other. So starting with the feet, then work onto your shins, so you can um, have a lacrosse ball along your shin bone um, and working on your anterior tib. Joy love loves some STMM prior to games. Absolutely, mate. I'm on board with that for sure. How you going, Jordy? Kensley's on as well. Sammy and Big Zach, good to see you, mate. Thanks for tuning in, guys. So going from along your shin bone to then going into your glutes, so the, specifically the piriformis. So getting into a glute stretch, also known as like a pigeon stretch, and you're opening up the glutes and then just releasing the tissues in there using the lacrosse ball. The lacrosse ball's nice and firm, and it's a lot smaller than the foam roller, so you can get into those specific smaller muscle groups, uh, and you can get a lot deeper as well. So it's almost like the elbow um, to replace the elbow of the masseuse, um, where the foam roller is a lot better for sort of flush and, and bigger muscle groups. So from there, once you've done that lacrosse ball work, get out the foam roller and do a minimum of 60 seconds on these larger muscle groups. And um, we want to focus on rolling and adding pressure towards the heart to just promote that blood flow and getting out all the waste products, particularly if you're doing this um, post-game um, where we're, we're doing it for more flush purposes. So promoting blood flow, roll towards the heart uh, firmly and then easy on the way down. And uh, if you're doing it before the game, make sure you're just not going too hard so you're not going to get um, any sort of residual fatigue from it. Um, so we want to make sure it's flush as well. So when you're doing it pre and post game, just be mindful that it's the most stressful physical stress of the week. So we want to do it with more of a fresh flush mentality. So if you have had a deep, if you've had a massage before, you'll know the difference between a flush massage where they're just using their hands and then a deep tissue massage where the elbows come out and the forearms. Um, so you shouldn't be any, there shouldn't be any pain face with myofascial foam rolling um, massage work on, on game day. Um, from there, so starting with our quads, then rolling over to our adductors and then, and then your lats. So the big, big three, big muscle groups, quads, it's going to help with your kicking performance. So you're getting good range of motion with knee flexion and, and hip extension. Adductors, it's going to help with your change of direction work. So that lateral footwork and then for your lats, for your overhead marking, ground balls uh, and ability to be able to rotate on the field. So that's three big areas. Um, George has written in importance of bre breath work whilst mobilizing. mobilizing. Absolutely. Uh, good point, Jordy. So in terms to, you know, for us to get a, if you're in a recovery um, point of view, so if it's post game, we want to be trying to do either box breathing or some form of slow um, breathing to be able to help you get into a relaxed state. And that will not only, um, help you physically, but also will help you mentally be able to wind down and, and hopefully promote good sleep that night. So breathing is really important post-game. Pre-game, probably not as important because we, we, we don't want to be in too far of a relaxed state, but by doing some mindful breathing, um, particularly if you're feeling you're, you're a bit anxious or stressed, that can help you um, keep relaxed You know, two hours before the game, which is typically when you're going to do this type of work. Um, so breathing is hugely effective and, and definitely something you want to be mindful of when, when doing this work. And you'll notice your tissues relax a lot more as well while you're doing it. And then finishing the last sequence or last two sequences, sorry, here we're into mobility where we're doing five reps each side for one to two sets. So we're, we're relying on the foam roller side on and doing some back rotations. Um, really important that you're looking past your fingertips so you're getting good thoracic rotation with that so make sure like i mentioned at the start watch the youtube channel if you um don't know these drills and then three-way hammy um, where we're getting a good neural stretch through the posterior chain so hammy flicks um a hip extension so straight leg hip extensions and then lateral side to side to stretch out the lower back in terms of flexibility this is where we want to hold for a little bit longer um 
and also focus on your, your breathing so you are relaxed in the stretch and hopefully you can deepen your range of motion throughout the stretch. Typically between 30 and 90 seconds is quite effective uh, for post-game element. If you're doing this pre-game, keep it dynamic. So just hold the stretch for about five seconds and then rotate forward. So we've got the uh, frog stretch, which is great for improving your uh, groin flexibility. And then we've got the couch stretch, which is really good for stretching out your, your quads and your hip flexors. So that's our version of the Limber 11. Hopefully it helps. Uh, like I mentioned, make sure to watch the YouTube channel. Um, and if you have any questions or queries, reach out to us via any of our socials. If you're new to the YouTube channel and you're watching the DeFranco uh, episode, also check out our recovery playlist and our mobility playlist um, in YouTube where you can focus on some exercises to improve uh, and some different options as well for your mobility. We've also got some free bodyweight workouts you can follow via our YouTube channel. And there's also our whole exercise database. So you can check out like power exercises, strength exercises, and making sure you know what good technique looks like for, for footballers. Okay, so for anyone listening into Instagram live, if you want to send through your questions, feel free to send them in by hitting the question button at the bottom of your screen. This question here has been sent through from Max. Right, he wrote, "Hi, hi, mate. What would be a good warm up before a game?" So, in my experience working with the teams that uh, over the last sort of six, seven years, uh, typically there'll be two warm ups on game day. The first one will be quite low level. It'll be typically anywhere between fifty minutes and thirty minutes from the game, and it's things like mobility drills, um, doing some low level athletic prep, so some running mechanics. Um, there's there's some footy involved, either the kick coaches and staff kicking the football and doing some ground balls, but the intensity is right down. So we're just getting the body prepped. We're still keeping the arousal level quite low because we're 30 minutes to 40, 40 minutes away from game time. So we don't want to, because it's a long game uh, football, we don't want to have those arousal, arousal levels up really high and then crashing and burning later on the game. G'day, Andy. Um so that's the first piece of the warm-up, what I'd recommend to do, Max. If, if your team doesn't do that, sometimes junior teams only do one warm-up, then you can just do some of your own movement type of work. Um, you can head over to our YouTube channel. We've got a playlist that has some running drills as, and some examples of some workouts that you can follow um, that would be applicable to, to game day warm-up. And then from there, the second one, which would be anywhere from sort of 15 to 20 minutes away from the game, we, that's when we want the intensity up um, close to game intensity and then ramping up to above game intensity before the game starts. So lots of noise, lots of high energy, um, fast pace, um, not only with our footwork, um, building up to some sprints and hard accelerations and change of direction, but also with tackling and tackle prep. Um, geez, we've got the Roo and the and the Andy on. G'day, fellas. One's watching in the lounge room, one's in the... Uh, TV room, I'm guessing. <laughs> or, um, or you guys probably might even have a cinema. Who knows? Um, yeah, so intensity is really high in the second one. Make sure the um, energy is really, really high. And basically, we want the arousal levels um, at a maximum so we're getting game ready. And that's the second one. Lots of football. So you might do a small sided game, uh, making sure you get, of course, some kicking in. And then typically, um, you'll have the lines break up into different um, focus areas for their specific um, forward work, forward craft, um, midfielders, um, getting that midfield connection, and then the backs as well might be practicing kickouts and and doing some one-on-one -on -one work. So, yeah, so you want to, intensity should be high on that second one, and also you want to be uh, connecting with your line um, and making sure that you're, um, you're ready to go once the, the uh, ball is bounced. So that would be a typical one for a warm-up. You've also written in a follow-up question, Max, what would be a good cool-down after the game? Um, typically, you want to try and wind down as best you can, so the opposite of a warm-up from a mental point of view. So making sure that you're doing some form of relaxation work, whether that be lying on your back, having the legs up on the wall to let the blood flow, um, leave the legs and and return back to the to heart to promote blood flow and help you relax as well by just lying on your back. Um, doing some breathing exercises can be another way to help relax your nervous system. Um, 
doing a ice bath can be a really effective way of reducing inflammation. So if you've had quite a physical game where there's lots of um, bumps and bruises and corkies, then, then cold is really good. So going into the beach or doing an ice bath to reduce that inflammation. Getting a flush massage by one of the trainers or physios or doing it yourself with a foam roller can be another way to really relax your body. Um, so, yeah, it should be or, or going into a pool could be another one as well uh, to promote blood flow. And, and But the key is that you're relaxing your body as best you can mentally and physically to promote um, a good night's sleep, which is going to be your most important um, box to tick in terms of re- cooling down appropriately and recovery. Hopefully that helped, Max. And thank you for sending in your question. If you have any follow-up questions, feel free to reach out. Um, and I'm more than happy to, to go into a little bit more detail. So feel free to direct message us on Instagram or send us an email at jack at preparelikeapro.com. Like I mentioned, those awesome prizes, guys, there are limited as spots. So if you want to join the academy, you get a free month trial. We've got one for the coaches, one for the strength and conditioning coaches, and we've got that 30-day challenge starting May 30th. So you've got just over a week to join before day one begins and the, and the um, wait list will be on hold. So if you want to join, make sure to join before May 30th to enter our 30-day challenge where you can win over $1,000 worth of prizes. The link will be in our show notes. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks for joining.